Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Jonathan Lampell and today we're going to be taking a look at light wrap in Blender's compositor. So first of all you might be wondering what light wrap is and so this picture of a cheetah on a sunset background is a really good example because you can see that on his back right about here the color from the sun is spilling on to the curve of his back and so it's not necessarily being lit directly but the color um, is kind of glowing over it. Imagine it was just like a straight black cutoff here. It would look very fake, like it was just like a piece of paper cut out and stuck on there. And that's what happens with a lot of our CG renders. So let's look at the scene I have set up here. I have a PNG image of Sintel and I want to put her over this realistic background. And if I just use an alpha over node, it looks very, very fake. All the edges are extremely clean uh, and even where it's really bright, none of it is spilling back onto her and we really want to add this so let's just go ahead and get rid of this alpha over node and let's dive right in in creating this so first of all we need to extract the colors from the background that are around her so first of all we're going to add a color and mix node and we're going to mix these two images and if you control shift click uh, you can see that now we have the background colors right where she is. And this is a really good first step. And I'm going to click this on because uh, that's necessary to help it go through the next couple steps. Just forewarning you. Okay, so next we're gonna take that and we're going to blur it a little bit. Uh, so let's go to filter and blur. And I'm going to turn on gamma correction and set these both up to about 50. So it's blurring quite a bit and you can see that gamma correction um, just corrects the light in a way that we definitely need it to for this example and then so we have a nice nice blur around the edges but we want to get rid of uh, where she is in the middle so to do that we're going to take a color invert but instead of inverting the RGB we're going to invert the alpha and you can see something really strange here happening and this won't happen if you take a render layer out of blender but it does happen with some PNG images uh, which this in fact is so to get around that I'm just going to duplicate the blur down here and I'm going to plug in the alpha instead so now you can see that we have the blurred alpha and I'm going to use that as the factor of the invert and you can see immediately that we now have a nice glow around. Now, finally, I'm going to take this. I'm going to add a color mix and screen. And I'm going to screen the original image like so. So obviously, that's way too much. But I'll show you how to dial it back in just a minute. So finally, to get the effect that we're going to be getting, uh, we need an alpha over node. Put the background on top, that one on the bottom, and we're going to, oh, oh, we need to convert pre-multiply, that's what it was. All right, so if we convert pre-multiply, then that nasty uh, PNG artifact stuff goes away, and we have our image. And clearly that's a lot, but it's a nice effect and we have it right away. Before we do much else, I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to press Control G and convert this into a group. That way uh, we can easily add it later um, if we want it. And you can see a lot of these inputs are kind of redundant. We don't, we don't need them all. And it would be nice to clean things up at this point before we go any farther. So we can see that the first one and the second to last one are redundant so I'm going to press tab that's how I'm getting in and out of this and I can go over to this interface panel here drag that down so second to last one was also the input so I'm just going to delete that one plug that in there and I'm going to rename this by control clicking over there on the right and call it foreground and if we tab back out, we can see that the background image is going into the second and to the last one. So I can delete the last one, 
take the second one, plug that in there, and I can name this background. And now we know that the last one is the alpha. Okay, so this is a really good start. But now what I want to do is I want to be able to um, control the size and strength of this from the outside of the node group so I don't have to be constantly going in. So I'm going to drag this little empty socket here to the size factor of the blur. And now once we're outside, we can set the size very easily to be, you know, however large you want. I'm going to set it to 0.5 for now. And then tabbing back in, um, I'm simply going to use this screen factor, plug that in there, and now we can also either make it brighter or lessen the effect uh, very easily. And this already looks a lot better than what we had before, but it's still, n there needs to be a couple layers of it because you see that it's kind of a flat blur, but we really want the edge to be obscured. So to do that, I'm going to go back into this node group and I'm going to select these guys right here, move them, move them up a bit so they're out of the way. And then I'm going to shift D and duplicate them down here. So we can plug in the foreground, we can plug in the background, um, and also the alpha. And if you control shift click, you can see that we now have the same result as we do here. Oh, it's a little different. What's going on? Oh, the size. That's right. Oh, for the size, I'm going to do one other thing, and this is going to make a big difference. Um, I'm going to go to, let's see, converter, math, divide, and then we're going to plug in the size node. And so whatever input we put in here, we're going to divide by 1.5. So that means that the blur is now going to be smaller than it was originally. So we can see that that's a regular input. That's divided by 1.5. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to move that, duplicate it one more time. Uh, and this time I'm going to divide it a little bit more. Divide this by 2. So you can plug in the size right there. And then plug in the foreground here, background here, just like we did on, on the other one, and also the alpha. And now you can see that we have a very thin line. And it kind of grows as you move up the stack. So now, now that we have our three layers, uh, let's just combine them together really quick. So I'm going to shift drag across here to add a kind of reroute notes that we can um, plug things in here without getting all messy. So now I'm going to add a color mix and screen. And um, if you haven't used screen before, it's basically like an add, but it doesn't, um, it kind of clamps it to the colors. Uh, so for instance, well, I'll show you at the very end once you can have a better example. So I'm going to screen these two together. So instead of just the first one or just the second one, it's kind of the best of both of them. And I'm going to use that to get rid of the edges. So this is just use transparency. And finally, I'm going to shift D, duplicate that, plug in these two right here. And now, instead of having just a flat blur, we have a nice layered blur that's going to work a lot better. Whoops. And then if we tab out of that, you can now see that it's working a bit better. So instead of just the flat blur that we had, we now have a nice layered blur. So I'd suggest not overdoing it. Um, definitely go easy on it because when it's obvious then um, it looks just as fake as if you had never used it in the first place so you want to go gentle uh, I'd say for this image maybe about 0.3 and maybe a factor of 0.35 just 
just a real subtle effect, but you can see that if I just add a color alpha over node, if I had just done this, it does make a good amount of difference, but it's subtle enough to look really good, especially around the hair and the pants, um, and on the arm there as well. So you can see that that's a good difference, and it really helps to blend in the foreground and the background, whether you're using a green screen or whether you're using anything else. And just as an extra little tip for when you're trying to composite things, uh, making the foreground blend into the background, a really good thing to do is color correct them after uh, you've already added them on top of each other. So you want to do this afterwards rather than before so that they both have the same effects going on. So I'm going to make the shadows a bit warmer, the highlights a bit cooler, and you can see that since that's going over the entire image, it really helps to tie the two together. And another thing that we can do is add a little bit of a glare. And again, all of this is just kind of extra stuff. Um, I like to add a little bit of ghosts and you can use a threshold of zero just to see what it's going to do. I usually pull it all the way up and then start dialing it back. So you can see that's way too much. It got sort of, sort of an Instagram effect. Um, however, I'm going to just add a little bit of it. Uh, you can see about 0.9. So you just have a little bit of light that's spilling over um, and that kind of subtle effect is really going to help. And lastly, I'm going to add a distort lens distortion and add a just a tiny bit of negative lens distortion, uh, maybe negative 0 0.01. And you can see that it really doesn't do a whole lot, but just the bending of the buildings and the arm um, just tiny visual clues that really help tie the image together. So I hope you learned something from this video and thanks for watching. Have a good one.